please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. This is the new MG5, MG's second battery electric vehicle and the first fully electric estate to hit the UK market. It's offered in two specs, the Excite and the Exclusive, with the latter shown here and being the more expensive variant. But it does have some nice additions that are well worth considering. It's worth remembering folks that this will be one of the cheapest EVs to buy with great range and class leading space. I honestly think this will take a large chunk of the fleet market and we'll see them running around as taxis with Uber drivers choosing these over ICE car variants due to the very low maintenance and running costs. One point that I've seen raised was the size of the front grille, but in all honesty with the number plate across it, it's broken up nicely and the styling as a whole seems pretty good. So what's it got? A massive boot for a start, you can remove the boot liner and make use of the 60-40 rear split seats for bigger loads and for dog owners there's no issues as seen here. Looking under the bonnet, an MG have left the essentials only. And why not? Screen wash and check and brake fluid is about as in-depth as your ownership experience needs to be. After all, this is an EV. Jumping inside and you'll be pleasantly surprised at the level of finish. These seats are very comfortable, have perforated leather and give support in all the right places. And this follows into the rear too. There's an additional centre headrest and armrest with integrated cup holders with two USBs to keep rear seat passengers charged up. In terms of space, as you'd expect, there's plenty of head and leg room and this is with the front passenger seat set to my ideal position. Jump into the front and you have a 12-way electrically adjustable driver's seat with lumbar and a reach and rake adjustment on the steering column so you'll have no issues finding your ideal driving position. The dash does carry over similarities from the previous ZSEV but there's a definite feel of progression here in terms of build quality and comfort. I'll say sitting here for 200 miles will be no hardship and you won't get out needing a massage. The infotainment system has undoubtedly been tweaked and feels responsive, but it won't bury you in layers or require a degree to operate it. This exclusive model also incorporates auto air conditioning, something missing from the previous ZS, and also maintains the auto hold and auto handbrake feature, and they've added an electrochromatic rear view mirror, which, for night driving, I found very useful. Charging is via a CCS port, which is neatly hidden behind the MG badge, and it supports 7 kilowatt Type 2 charging for home usage or 80 kilowatt DC for when you're out on the road. In terms of range, I personally manage 45 miles from 20%, while miles manage 71 miles from 30%. But the MG5 actually exceeded its WLTP range and covered 220 miles from a full charge with 3% remaining. It really is a mile eater. So, how is it to drive and what's it like on the motorway? Hello and welcome to another episode and we are in the MG5. It's in dynamic red, dynamic red, dynamic red, dynamic red, uh, and it's beautiful to look at, really, really nice. And I feel quite privileged that I'm possibly only the second person to drive this. Have you driven it yet, Miles? Uh, no, so you're actually the first person to drive this. <laughs> Excellent. And the first thing I want to tell you about is the seating. So in terms of comfort, there's a marked improvement over the ZS. Now, I don't want to say the ZS is bad, but I just want to say this is very good. There's a, a, a huge bolster here on both sides, and then the seat squab has got some uprights here, which sort of keep your, your legs tucked in nicely, which is, uh, which is a nice touch. It's also, on this being the exclusive model, it's got the lumbar support, you've got electric driver's seat on there. And one thing that we were missing on the ZS EV, which you've got on this car, we've got the, um, reach adjustment on the steering wheel as well as the rake adjustment so you can get a bit or you can get comfortable in the ZS you can get really comfortable in this you can get a really good position for you for driving no matter if you're tall short yeah okay Perfect. so yeah that also one thing this has over the ZS EV is that this has been on the exclusive model at least it's got automatic air cons you just dial in your temperature and and it sorts it out for you um, like climate control rather than uh, the blue to red gauge that you get on the mm. ZS this TFT display I'm really liking this. So you've got a TFT display in the centre and then two analogue gauges. So at the left you've got the speedo and then on the right you've got the um, tach tachometer. Not tach power gauge? Two. Power gauge, yeah. So yeah, so you've got like, your green uh, efficiency range going around to your boost over for the electric yeah. and then you've got your charge which drops down to regen as well. Um, but that's then mirrored, it's got a couple of little digital gauges on the display which sort of look like continuations of the, of the dials. Mm. Um, so one you've got the uh, voltage reading for the 12 volt, well, 
yeah, 12 volt battery, the auxiliary battery. And on the left hand side, you've got a percentage gauge for your uh, main traction battery as well. Um, so that's great. So on this, again, you get a digital readout of the actual percentage of the battery, which is again one of the uh, improvements that we requested from the ZS EV when it was launched. In that's terms of size, I think this is probably an edge over an Astra estate, but smaller than a Passat. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's closer to the Golf than the Passat, for sure, but it's... Uh, yeah, probably actually the Golf. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a decent size. You know, I've previously had a couple of estate cars. Um, yeah, no, it's not as long as, an, as like, for example, an A4 or, an, or a Passat, but it's, uh, it's a useful size estate. Probably close to maybe a Peugeot 308 SW sort of size. Yeah. But yeah, plenty, plenty of space. What so in the boot? Were you saying with the uh, the load liner on and the uh, seats up? What was it? What was it? Was it four hundred? One. Oh, with the seat. Yeah, with the seats up in the in the boot uh, level thing, it's four hundred and seventy something liters. I think it is. I'll double check that for you. I've just dropped that into Curs three, and actually I've got quite a lot of regen still at ninety seven percent. So that's not bad. It's not full. It's not the full regen that we, we are going to get simply because the battery is still quite full, but uh, it's, uh, it's certainly good enough. Yeah, so the battery, uh, sorry, the boot capacity uh, with the seats up to the luggage cover is 464 litres. That's still uh, massive, isn't it? Yeah, uh, with the seats up, uh, but loaded up to the roof rather than up to the pull across yeah. blind thing, it's 578 litres. And if you fold the seats down, it gets to 1,456 litres. Um, so it's, it's a good sized practical car. You're going to put. Um, we've got a dog now, so we. Uh, one thing we learned is once you get a dog is that you can't ever have your boot again, um, <laughs> because the dog's, you know, small dog. It's only a Datsun cross cocker spaniel. It's a yeah. puppy, but it still it has a cage that takes up a massive amount of space. Yeah. Very similar to toddlers. When you've got a toddler, um, all of the accoutrements take up a lot more room than the actual toddler. Yeah. Um, so you know, you've got a car seat that fills up half the back seat. You've got a push chair that fills up most of the boot and I'm guessing we're going to test that out with a buggy. Uh, we, yeah we might do, we might do. It's in the uh, it's in the boot of the Tesla. So All right, um, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go then. Check that out. Um, uh, interestingly I'm back up at 98% now, we've just had a little bit of a cruise downhill and uh, that's quite pleasing to see. Nothing more pleasing than some free energy. Indeed. Which, uh, it feels good doesn't it? Mm. It feels really good. What's it like from that, that point of view? Because obviously... It feels very comfortable bit. actually. One oh, thing... Sorry about that. Something in the door card. Uh, it feels really good actually as a passenger. I feel really comfortable. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I've got plenty of leg room. I could move my chair but even further back actually. Um, yeah, no, it feels feels comfy. I, I like all of these soft touch materials around the dashboard. They've really improved on that. Over the one thing we've seen with MG over the last few years, they've done a bit of a journey similar to Kia did. Yeah. So uh, they came in initially at a strong price point and uh, competitive pricing got it foothold in the marketplace and then they've improved the interior qualities yeah. to be on a par with yeah I mean anyone from VAG or or that ilk you know it's got loads of nice soft touch fabrics all around the side there on the door cards and everything as well um, and the seat yeah the seat comfort's really good actually it really is good. it is uh, it, it's a nice place to be I remember when I first drove the ZS and I was just completely blown away by it I got in and I thought because you, know, you can't help but Everybody says it's Chinese. It's going to be rubbish. That and everybody says it. And you can't help but be tarnished by that slightly. But I got in a ZS and I was like, this "It's completely wrong. It's completely wrong." And this, I can feel, is definitely a stage up. Oh, it's a big lorry there. Definitely a big stage up from what the um, from what the ZS was. Yeah, and obviously for us as an MG dealership, we came on board just as the ZS was launching yeah. uh, the petrol version. Yeah. And we saw an improvement from the petrol ZS to the electric ZS in terms of refinement and build quality. And obviously with the HS that they've launched as well, that becomes, again, another more premium product on top of that. And so every time they launch a new car, the, the interior quality is getting better. Yeah. Um, and it's getting up to the sort of, you know, what we describe as the, sort of the Germanic levels of, of comfort yeah. that you get in a car. Yeah. So here we are on the motorway. Interior noise, similar to the ZS. I think you know, it's quite well dampened. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's good. It's going to pull. What brake horsepower we got here, mate? Uh, so this is uh, actually slightly more powerful than the uh, ZS EV. This is a uh, 115 kilowatt motor, as opposed to 110 that's in the um, in the ZS EV. So it's about 154 brake horsepower, I think that is. Um, it's not bad. So yeah, zero to 60 is uh, 7.3 seconds. 
That's so that's quite reasonable, I think. I think for most, yeah, for, if you compare it against other cars in the class, so if you're comparing it against, for example, a Toyota Corolla yeah. S8 um, or a Golf S8, for the price that this starts the market at, which is uh, 24495 for the Excite model, uh, 26995 for this, the exclusive model that we're sat in, yeah. um, at that price point, uh, you're there or thereabouts with the sort of entry level petrol um, S8 cars like yeah. the Corolla and the Golf. Um, and obviously this has got much lower role, um, in terms of your running costs and everything, you know, you've no car tax, you've got, yeah. if you're a company car driver, it's, you know, currently is a zero benefit in kind for an EV. Um, so when you sort of factor those costs in as well, it actually becomes really competitive on price point, but also in specification as well. Yeah. You know, this we've got with, say with the heated seats in the front here and um, the automatic climate control and cruise control and all this sort of thing. Um, it makes it actually a really compelling product to compete with you know, other petrol and diesel cars, not just as being the first EV estate car, which it is, it's the first EV uh, in Europe that's going to be an, uh, an SW or a state car. Yeah. Um, and MG's really sort of testing the market here because they've got the backing of SAIC, their yeah. parent company. Um, this car was available... Uh, sorry, how did you say that name? SAIC? SAIC. I'll go with Psych. Psych? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll go with Psych. S-A-I-C. Whatever you Shanghai like. Automotive <laughs> Industrial Corporation, whichever way you pronounce it. Okay, um, so, um, in terms of you know, them as a, as a, as a backing company, uh, so this car was available under the Roe brand in China yeah. uh, with a lower power motor um, and with a smaller battery. They've then, MG said, okay, well, let's take this model, bring it to the UK, bring it to Europe, see how it, go, how it does as a first foray. Yeah. Um, because... Nobody else is doing an EV estate. We think there's a we think there's an opening for it. I think they're, they're, you know, they're very smart to do so. They're right. I, I was uh, driving to York the other day, and I was in an estate car, and I was sat behind an estate car, which was sat behind another estate car. And so many people say nobody wants estates, and actually they do. People do buy them, and, and for usable space, I think there's going to be more in this than most SUVs that are available. Uh, but you've also got the benefits of the range. And range is, range is everything, isn't it? People are like, yeah, but an SUV suffers with range. You know, it eats through it eats through energy because they're so big. And you'll see that, for example, you've got an I-Pace in. The bigger car, it uses more range, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. So, yeah, if we, obviously I've got an MGZS myself as a company car. My wife's got the I-Pace. Um, she'll drive 40 miles in her I-Pace, and it's, it'll use the same sort of energy as what my um, ZS does, you know, sort of 70 or 80 miles with. Yeah. It's really quite a... Thirsty um, on electrons uh, compared to the MG. So I, I need to tell you about how it drives. We've done 10.2 miles. I'm on 95%. So that's quite important. And we were on 99% when we left. Sorry, it's changed later. We're on 99% when we left. Um, that was 70, and then we we slowed down. Now we're doing 45 because of the traffic around Birmingham. But directional stability. This is something people always ask about. It just it goes in a very very straight line, and that's quite an important thing for a relaxed drive. It allows you to relax and not have to put in minute inputs into the steering to keep it in a straight line, and it's doing that. So even though it hasn't got MG Pilot um, and the adaptive cruise, we're missing those. It still feels a very very comfortable and easy drive, easy to get on with. I've just noticed something else there, Miles. If I put that indicator on, um, there's a nice LED in the mirror. And how often do you drive along with your music blaring and an indicator on because you forget to turn it off? Yeah. And we haven't got that on the ZS, so that's a, that's a nice little touch. They've, they've really sort of gone to, gone to town on the, the little bits that they, not that they missed off the ZS, but they, they didn't get in the first production model. And, and it really shows, it really shows. Just the, the, whole, the whole driving experience, I know it's only been 5% and 10 miles, 11 miles now, but it's, it's really, really nice. It's a great place to be. And uh, this just shouts to me, taxi, taxi, taxi. Oh, 100%. Yeah, if you were going to, I mean, and with the range that's available on this as well, it would work really well for your, with the large boot as well. Yeah. For the, you know, airport shuttle runs and things like that. Yeah, The number of, you know, the number of cars that I see when, you know, when I go to Manchester or Liverpool or Leeds Bradford Airport, you know, around, to my northerner, um, <laughs> when we, when we go to those local airports and there's all these taxis. One thing is now, uh, for example, Leeds Bradford Airport, if you, um, have an EV, you can go to the express front of terminal parking 
it's right you know, 50 yards from the building. Wow. Um, and you get an hour free parking there. So one thing, so I, I'm always the one that goes and picks up my family from the airport, whatever. I always take, well, we have EVs, so I always take the electric car. And it's great because normally it's like three pounds minimum charge just to go through the barrier. Wow. So I get, a, I get an hour's parking for free, so it's saving me like eight quid every time. Yeah, yeah. Something else I've, I've noticed actually is the, the ZS, well, our ZS um, had a little bit of motor wine. I don't know if you picked up on that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. And I'm not hearing that here. I can hear an inverter, I can hear the inverter, but I can't hear a motor. Well, I'm going to say inverter. Somebody's going to put me right on that, aren't they? They're going to shut up, it's the motor. But I can, I can hear a tiny, tiny bit, but it's very, very, very quiet. And yeah, no, it's well isolated in this car. The, yeah. the, 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 well, insulated, so it's, it's, yeah. yeah, the noise seems very well done. One thing under the bonnet in this car, have you had a chance to look under the bonnet? Uh, no, Okay. Uh, okay, so when you look under the bonnet of the car, there's a big plastic cover covering everything yeah. uh, on the engine bay. They literally, they just left the screen wash and the power steering fluid, I think, is, or, the, or the coolant, is all you can get a access to. Everything else is shielded off. Yeah, it's all you need, though, isn't it? It is, and to be fair, it's, it'll help with the sound reduction, with the noise reduction and everything else. Yeah. Uh, and it also means that when someone like, you know, my mum, for example, got the car and she wanted, you know, she needed to top up the screen wash. She wouldn't be looking at a whole load of cables going, oh God, what the hell do I, uh, do, I do here? Yeah. She just sees the blue port that she puts the, you know, the fluid in, that's great, you know. So um, I think that, yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, it is very well refined. I'm really liking the build quality. I'm really liking the um, stability on the road. The Chinese model as well. Um, so I drove a pre-production model back in February this year uh, when MG were first developing the car and uh, that had the, they had the softer springs on the Chinese model as well as a yeah. lower power motor yeah. and I think they firmed it up, for, it definitely feels like it's been yeah. firmed up for the UK market which is great because obviously our roads aren't quite as agricultural as are in some places as what you do get in China um, so and we prefer sort of a bit of a firmer drive over here so yeah, um, yeah no, I hate to come back to VAG again but it does feel kind of more like a Passat yeah. as a sort of you know as a place to sit it feels like that sort of, in fact, we're just overtaking an Audi A4 estate, is it? You know, size-wise, actually, we look about a little bit taller, even. Yeah, we so, are. Certainly on a, on a par. Yeah, on, on the road, this looks about the same size as an A4. So scrap what I said before about it not being that big. It actually looks about the same size. It does. It does. And I think your, your seating position, at least, was higher up then. Yeah. I've just felt the aircon automatically come in there because mm. my legs are getting cold. I've got shorts on. It's raining. Um, that's that's nice. That's something that I definitely missed. What's this button here? Econ. Econ. So that'll make a more economical what, what running that... of the climate control. I guess it's just going to turn down the fan speed a bit, or maybe just okay. maybe it's going to modulate the uh, aircon compressor a bit, so it just doesn't yeah. work quite as uh, full power. Saves a bit of energy, or more for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So just to give you an update, uh, we've done 20 miles, just uh, 18 miles, sorry, and we've used 7%. That's bloody good going, isn't it? That's I mean, not bad. Yeah, I mean, the, we're, in tra we're in heavy traffic here, so we're, we're only doing sort of 55, 60 miles an hour, which is optimum for us. We're not yeah. upset about that, really. But uh, range-wise, it will be good to see, actually, what we finish the day with yeah. um, and how fast it charges. I'll maybe take it onto a rapid charger on the way back and see what sort of charge rate we can get. Definitely, definitely.